This fantastic hand was specifically designed for new NICU nurses to practice taping on before they place IVs and tape IVs on real patients. Hi friends, welcome to this video. My name is Anna and I am a critical care registered nurse. One of the questions that I get asked at work a lot is how I tape the peripheral IVs that I place. So today I thought I would do a video for you on how I tape a hand PIV that I placed in a neonate. And I'm so excited because we have a fantastic model that we're going to be using to demonstrate this taping on. It looks and feels just like a neonate's hand and forearm. So if you want more information about this mannequin, this model that I'm using, you can go to the description. I'll have some more information for you there. But let's get started with how to tape a peripheral IV in a neonate's hand. All of the information in this video is based on the guidelines that have been put out by the INS or the Infusion Nurses Society. And they are the authority on all things related to vascular access devices. All of this information is also completely up to date at the time of filming this video. The INS updates their standards every five years. So all of this information is based on the 2021 revised version of infusion therapy standards of practice. So let's get started with taping. Like I mentioned earlier, I will be taping a hand PIV in a neonate, and this fantastic hand was specifically designed for new NICU nurses to practice taping on before they place IVs and tape IVs on real patients. As we tape an IV, there are two key things to remember. The first is that whatever securement device that you're using or however you tape your IV, cannot interfere with your ability to routinely assess your PIV. This means that you must always be able to see the insertion site of your IV. Second is that your taping cannot impede vascular circulation or the delivery of your IV infusion therapy. This means that your taping cannot be too tight as to cut off circulation or alter perfusion in any way. Let's talk about the materials that you'll need to gather prior to taping an IV. First, you'll want to grab needles for the IV insertion itself. Then you'll also want to get an IV start kit. I find that these pre-assembled kits are awesome because the contents are sterile inside. So there's a small sterile roll of tape that you'll want to use as well as two by twos and other things. You'll also want to grab some arm boards of various sizes if you don't know exactly what size you'll want. You will need a T connector or an extension piece. And I personally prefer the extension piece and the little guys, the neonates, because it's so much smaller, it's less bulky, and I feel like it's easier to tape. You'll also want to grab a safe side or a microclave, depending on what you call them, so that your IV can be a closed setup. You can scrub the hub before you attach any other pieces. If you're placing a PIV in a neonate, you'll also want to grab a separate dressing that is a, um, a semi-permeable dressing in a very small size. Part of the INS standards and updates are that the dressings must have a fabric border around the edge. So I grabbed one of these neonatal size dressings and I will replace the pediatric size that comes in the IV start kit. You'll also want to have additional adhesive tape. It's important that you use the sterile tape inside your IV start kit when you're taping anything around the actual IV insertion site itself because there's a lot of pathogenic bacteria that can adhere to a adhesive roll that's in your patient's bedside cart or around your stethoscope. It's acceptable to use a roll of adhesive tape when you're taping the arm to the arm board, for example, but anytime you're working with taping around the insertion site itself, you want to stick with that small sterile roll that's in your IV start kit. Prior to taping, we want to make sure that the arm board is an appropriate size for our patient. And in a neonatal patient, we want to be really careful that we aren't taping their fingers splayed out to the arm board. We want to pick an arm board that allows the patient's fingers to slightly wrap around the end, have their thumb also wrap around the end, and also that's not too wide on the sides. This will make for easier taping, easier securement of the arm to the arm board, and will ultimately help your IV last longer. To prep my tape, I will take the adhesive roll that's not the small sterile roll, and I like to make two what I call arm saver pieces. 
and this just means that I'm taking a slightly shorter piece of adhesive and placing it on top of a slightly longer piece of adhesive. I probably make one about two thirds of the size of the longer piece. I'll stick the two sticky sites together and this allows less adhesive contact with your patient's skin, which can really be quite irritating on, in the neonates especially. And um, so this will protect their skin, have less adhesive directly on their skin, but you'll still be able to tape those little um, extra pieces underneath your arm board. I always make two of those arm saver pieces, but typically I'll only use one. It really just depends on where you are placing and taping your PIV. Next, we're going to open up our IV start kit. One of the first things that I'll do is remove the pediatric size dressing and replace it with the neonatal dressing that I grabbed. Again, this is the dressing that has the fabric collar around it. Depending on the size of your patient, you might also want to remove the skin prep that comes inside the kit and use a more acceptable skin prep that is appropriate for your patient's gestational age. I take out the tourniquet also because this pediatric tourniquet will simply be much too large for this neonatal patient. Here you can see that I've just grabbed a rubber band, I'll cut it in half, and that will be our tourniquet for this little baby. Finally, I'll prep the sterile roll of tape. I'll typically just tear two or three pieces that are relatively short. I'll put them inside of the packaging somewhere that I can access them easily, and those will be ready to go in case I need to use them to secure my catheter further. Depending on where you're placing your PIV, you may not need to use any tape directly on the IV catheter itself, but sometimes in these little guys, it's really helpful to put a piece of tape sticky side up underneath the wings of your catheter and fold it over before you place your dressing on top. So I'm going to stop here and say also that I'm not wearing gloves throughout any of this process. As you've probably noticed, I think it's easier for you to see my hands and see what I'm doing when I'm not wearing gloves, but just know that as soon as you start prepping all of your materials to tape, and certainly when you're actually placing the IV, you wanna make sure that you've performed hand hygiene and that you're wearing clean gloves. At this point, we are ready to actually start taping our PIV. It's important to grab another set of hands when you're doing this, especially with little guys, you can't tell them to hold still. So to set yourself up for success, to make sure you don't lose your IV in the process of taping, grab another set of hands and have them help you do this. For this video, I'm going to be doing this all by myself, but just know that in reality, you really need another person to tape this, to hand you pieces of tape, and to make sure that the patient doesn't wiggle. This video is just about taping, but we are going to assume that the IV has been successfully placed into the vein. I've connected my primed um, extension piece with the microclave on the end. And in this patient, I'm going to go ahead and put a small piece of tape, part of the sterile tape that I prepped. I'm gonna go ahead and put that underneath the wings of the IV and fold them forward, sticky side down on the skin now to provide a little bit of extra stability. I'm now going to take my neonatal dressing and put it over this catheter. And it's really important in that small, clear window in the center of the dressing that you are able to see the majority of your IV insertion site. To do this, I typically leave a little bit of the catheter in the window so I know exactly where my insertion site starts. After this has been placed, I typically will take another small piece of tape and put it behind the dressing, kind of on top of the wings and at the end of the dressing to provide a little bit more stability before I start taping the rest of the IV. Now we're going to go ahead and put the arm board underneath our patient. In real life, as soon as that arm board is on their hand, they'll probably go ahead and wrap their fingers and their thumb around. And if you turn the IV to the side, you can see that on this really tiny little guy, most of that hub of the IV where our extension piece or your T connector is, is hanging off the IV. And this can be problematic because that can catch on different things and pull on that IV. And also that hub can put a lot of pressure on your patient's knuckles, fingers, whatever may be showing. So to fix this, I typically will take a small piece of gauze or a two by two and fold it up a few times and I'll place that right underneath the hub to provide a nice barrier for their skin and also to help prevent that catching on anything. 
To secure this piece, I'll take a longer piece of adhesive tape and I will wrap that around kind of the front of the IV to provide some support and I'll wrap that around to the underside of the IV as you can see here. Next, we are going to place one of our arm saver pieces that we previously made. I will typically place this piece more in the patient's forearm just to make sure that I have a really great visualization of the insertion site, that little window, and up the patient's arm a little bit too. If you think about it, that catheter does not terminate right where it's inserted. You want to watch the insertion site, but the tip of the catheter, the, the end of the straw, if you will, is maybe an inch higher than that. So by placing this arm saver piece a little bit higher on the arm, I'm able to also assess where this um, IV actually terminates. One of the last pieces of tape that we'll place is a piece that secures the extension tubing or the T connector directly to the catheter. Without this piece, if you were to tug on that extension piece, you would be pulling directly on the IV site and we don't want that. To secure this piece, I typically will pinch a little bit of the tape completely around the T connector itself. And then with the ends, I'll go ahead and wrap those around some part of the IV. And for good measure, I'll usually give this piece a little tug too, just to ensure that the force that I'm pulling with is being distributed evenly around the whole IV, not directly on that insertion site. To finish up, I'll give the IV one more inspection, and in real life, you'll be able to tell how your patient is either pulling their hand or wiggling their fingers, and you'll be able to see where you may need a little bit of extra securement for your IV, but this looks pretty good, and so the last thing we'll do is initial and date this IV so we know when it was placed. You can put this piece really anywhere you'd like to on your IV. You can put on top of your arm saver piece. If you notice one of your sides is maybe lifting a little bit, you can add some further securement by placing that piece there. It really doesn't matter as long as you are able to see your insertion site. There you have it. That is how I typically tape the PIVs that I place in Neonate's hands. Remember though, there are a lot of different ways that you can tape a PIV. This is just one of the many ways. If you found a better way to do this, I'm always looking for new ideas, so please comment below and let me know what you have found works for you. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like, and let me know too if you'd be interested in videos on how I tape scalp PIVs or foot PIVs, for example. I hope you learned something in this video, and I hope that this makes your IV taping a little bit easier in the future.